Okay, now to the the rest of it. All right, we have the Federation of Light Court. Then judgment is pronounced. Okay. Not sure how to tell you this because this is going to be even more controversial as if the stuff I said before wasn't. So here we go. I hope you can see this. Okay, so judgment is pronounced on a third of the angels. The thing was, is that in the heavens, the thing was, maybe if I put it this way, the thing was, is that in the heavens, of the third of the angels that rebelled, in um, extra biblical literature, and there are different sources, and um, trying to think, anyway, the point is, is that what happened was, Lucifer was in a charge of one-third of the angels. Part of those angels that rebelled with Lucifer willingly, willingly fought on Lucifer's behalf when he led the rebellion. Okay? Some of them angels, they were underneath him. They were told, this is what you're going to do, and they did it. They didn't want to be a part of it. They were scared. However, they sinned. They became part of that rebellion themselves. So, out of this whole third, you had some angels that didn't want to do it, and you had angels that did. And together, they fought against Father God. And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, as the scriptures say, and he prevailed not. So, it is telling us that he lost that battle. So, Going up before the living God, a judgment is pronounced on the third of the angels. And so now I'm going to show you what the judgment is that is pronounced on these angels. I'm going to get back to this John 10 scripture because that is going to be the hardest pill to swallow. However, if you want to take the red pill, this is what I'm giving you. The judgment that was pronounced over Lucifer and one-third of the angels was A, they were to become mortal men, that they would die like men. Number two, that they would drink of the cup of forgetfulness. This is also in some of the Apocrypha. Um, I'm going to get into what all of that is into the next part. Next, they would be cast to the earth until final judgment. We have Jude 6, verse 6, in everlasting chains of darkness. I'm going to explain what these things are and how they can be and how they came into being. Okay? Now, I want to take your attention over here just for a moment. Notice we have six-day creation over here in this corner. Because when Father God created man, okay, that had not happened here yet. But over here, during the six-day creation process, we had the pre-Adamites, okay, in Genesis 1.26. When you, remember, we talked about Genesis 1.26. We have the pre-Adamic race going along while all of this is going on, okay? These, Lucifer and his angels were never told that they could create man in their own image and in their own likeness. This was their attempt at seeing what it was like to have a human body. Okay, they were doing some really awful things before Lucifer led that rebellion up against the Lord. Okay, these were some low-handed things and this was also a temptation to those angels that followed Lucifer to do this. This was not something ordained by the living God. Our living God is not going to create phantoms. He's not going to create images that are an idol. He's not going to create these things. He's not going to create a vain show, okay? This is something that Lucer, Lucifer was doing when he was rebelling just before he led that big rebellion up against the Lord God. And then the Lord God had enough of it, 
Lisa when they lost this round with Michael and his angels. They had judgment pronounced on them. Now let us look at some of the verses that I have here. First of all, they were going to become mortal men. And I am going to bring your attention to this specific verse before we um, get into the real controversial thing. I would like you first to go, this is Psalm 82, and this might be shocking for many of you. Verse 6. I think we'll start at, at verse 6. I have said, ye are gods with a small g and all of you are children of the most high but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes who is he speaking to he's speaking to the angels here he's telling them I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high did you know that every single one of these here, going across here, everything that was under the Lord God, all the angelic hosts are his, were his children and are his children? They're his children. Okay, Lucifer was his child until iniquity was found in him. Okay, and right here we're going to see, we're going to come back to this verse because there is something really big we're about to uncover. It says, I have said, ye are gods, all of you are children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men. Men. Okay, let's go to Jude. Jude only has one book. It is the book just before Revelation. We're going to look at verse 5-6. Okay, I'm going to read it. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this. Ye once knew this. There was a time that you did know this. How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of the great day. Meaning they have been placed in everlasting chains of darkness until judgment day. You know, you've been taught that those everlasting chains of darkness was hell. Well, that's about half right. I'm about ready to send you in for a big surprise here. Okay read another verse they will be cast to the earth until final judgment into everlasting chains of darkness which is what we just read in Jude 6 okay but in Jude 5 it tells you though you once knew this you once knew this okay okay now now I'm going to deliver the baby here Okay, now I'm going to deliver. Here we go. We know that there was a war in the heavenlies. We know now, we know that Lucifer led a rebellion with the angels. And it was Michael and his angels that fought against the dragon. Lucifer was in charge of a third of the angels. He ordered them. He was in charge of them and he ordered them that they were going to do this rebellion and they did it some of them very willingly some of them not really wanting to do it but they went along with it then judgment was pronounced on those angels some of them were repentant some of them were not but both equally were children of the living God part of that judgment was that they were going to die like men they would have known what men was. Even though Adam had not been created yet, they would have known what man was. There were several creations of pre-Adamites. They even attempted to make their own. 
so they knew what a dom was. They knew exactly what it was. And they did not want to be a dom, okay? Because let me tell you something. Man was made a lower than the angels. There were things about Adam that they were not going to be able to do anymore. They, were, they, had, they had the ability to do a lot of things up in the heavens that as a man, they were not going to be able to do that. Their, their extra powers were going to be gone. Um, there's just a lot. They had a lot to lose. This was not a good judgment. Okay? Also, they were told that they were going to drink of the cup of forgetfulness. Now, the person that brings that to the table is Zen Garcia. And he can, he's got books, he can back this up. Very good. Oh my gosh, this man, um, I recommend going, looking him up on eBay, and then um, looking up his books. He's got some really good books with a lot of good information in them. And um, this will fill in the gaps more of what I'm telling you. I am like giving you the crash course here. He can give you the meat and potatoes of the crash course. Very, very, very well laid out. The cup of forgetfulness. What that meant was that when these angels were to come to the earth, they were not going to remember their first estate. They were not going to remember that they were gods, small g, up in the heavenlies. Okay, they were not going to remember this at all. They were going to come to this earth and they were going to live in flesh, in prison suits. They were going to live in flesh, okay? They were going to live in flesh on this earth. And they were not going to have any remembrance of a pre-existence, okay? That was part of the judgment for the rebellion. And I keep getting ahead of myself because being cast to the earth, they were going to be cast to the earth until the final judgment, okay? In everlasting chains of darkness. What are everlasting chains of darkness? I know you've probably been taught that it's hell. They're just being held in Tartarus somewhere. That's what people have been taught. Everlasting chains of darkness means that you have no you got no hope of salvation. If you're in everlasting chains of darkness, then the light is not going to shine down upon you. Okay? You're stuck. You're definitely stuck. So this judgment, who are these angels that were cast to the earth that don't even remember what their pre-existence was all about that are now mortal men? Who are these angels? I'm going to show you something. And this I got from Jonathan Kleck. And I am telling you, this fits like a hand in a glove. And this isn't for everybody. Some of you, you're probably going to be done with my series when I get to this point. Others of you are going to be so glad you know you are going to have a whole different understanding of why you are in this world. And then we are going to get to the story of Adam and Eve. Let me pause. I guess I'm not going to pause. So here we go. I would like you to go to the book of John 10. This is the gospel of John 10. And we're going to look at something that Jesus said. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Fourth gospel. This is not for the faint of heart. I rejected this so bad. When I when I when I learned this when I first heard of this through Jonathan Cleck, um I rejected this. I was like, Oh, oh no, now we've gone too far. And it wasn't until long time later I was on a making a comment on a website something completely different and I was explaining something about Cain and then someone came along and explained something to me 
And it was when they explained it that, oh my goodness, the light bulb went on. And then I went back to Jonathan Kleck's website, and I have learned so much more since. I do. I am presenting this. I have to say this. I want you to go to John 10:34, and we might even backtrack. Nope, we're going to start at 30, and I'm just going to read this because some of you may have heard people explain this one particular scripture, and they are half right. Also, there have been fundamentalists that came along and exposed anybody that tried to explain this as a liar. And I don't know that the people that explained this, I don't know that they really knew how right they were, but uh, I, it seems to me that they would say this and they would say that's because the Bible says so, and they really didn't have anything to back it with. So here we go. Verse 30. I and my father are one. This is Jesus speaking. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? Verse 33, The Jews answered him, saying, For good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou being a man makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said ye are gods. Now here's something we keep overlooking. He's telling them that he wrote it in their law. Okay? He's telling, he's telling the Pharisees that he wrote this in their law. Okay? Which means he would have been before he was ever born. Okay, so anyway. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? And if he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God? You hear what he just said? He's telling, he's telling the Jews, don't your own scriptures say that I said that you are gods with a small g? Well, they're just mere men, aren't they? Mere men. But Jesus is telling them, your own scriptures say that you're gods. Because I said you are gods. He's saying he said that they were gods. He was saying it. And then it said that the scripture can't be broken. So he's reiterating that it's truth. And then he's saying, if, I'm te if you guys believe that you're gods, and I put that in your scriptures and you believe that you're gods, then how is it you're calling me a blasphemer because I said I'm just the, I'm the son of God? Okay? Do you understand the magnitude of what I just said? The Jews, they're just people like you and me, Adamites, right? Just Adamites, just like us. We're all, you know, one big world here. And he's telling them, your own scriptures say that you're gods. How could you be gods if you're just a mortal man? What scriptures was he talking about? Let us go back to Psalm 82, and I am going to show you what he's talking about and what scriptures he is referring to. All right, when we go to Psalm 82, hold on to your hats. God standeth, I'm going to read the whole thing. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among gods, with a small g, plural. Obviously, the, the gods that he is judging from are the angelic beings. They are gods with a small g. Okay? Then it says, How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Here we go. Verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. 
They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Everything's been turned upside down. Interesting. Edgar Casey, that the earth was once a certain way and then it went upside down. Okay. I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High, the angels. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Do you know who those angels are that fell and took on flesh? Have you figured it out yet? The pre-existence. That's probably the only thing. If I, if I took 100 points from the Mormon church, I could probably only agree with one, and that would be the pre-existence, and that was us. We were the ones. We were the ones that were under Lucifer when he was the good guy, when he was in the heavens leading the worship. You get it? We were worshiping the Most High until rebellion was found in Lucifer. He ordered his people under him. He controlled a third of the angels and he led a rebellion against the Lord God. And Michael, the archangel, and his angels, they fought against us in the heavens. We were a part of that rebellion whether we wanted to be or not. And then we all faced the judgment seat for our sin, for what it was we did. Some of us were repentant. We didn't want to be a part of it. And some of us did want to be a part of it. Part of the judgment was that we were going to be cast to the earth, but we weren't being cast to the earth in an angelic form. No, that got taken from us. The other part was we were going to be mortal men mortal men on the planet okay and in that process we were going to drink of the cup of forgetfulness we were not going to remember one part of where we came from all we were going to know is this life okay that's all we were going to know do you know what everlasting chains of darkness is you want to know what those chains are I'm going to end this video and now I am going to get into detail on something and I'm going to spell it out through the gospel. I'm, I'm going to spell out to the end and then we are going to get into Adam and Eve and how all this came about. What was the sin in the garden? How did we get here? We're going to answer all those questions. Be blessed.